What up, people? Push Wild Black here with Push Wild Black Sports, and this is a quick video. It's been a minute. It's actually been a month, but I got sick, and I didn't want to do um, a video or videos while I was coughing. So when um, I last left, it was, I don't even think the first round cause it was completely done. I think Cleveland and Indiana was uh, in game seven. That's how long this has been. And I honestly thought that um, that Indiana wouldn't necessarily win, but I had like two different uh, outcomes. And I honestly thought that Cleveland, if they beat Indiana, which they ended up doing, I thought that Cl Cleveland would lose to Toronto, and boy, was I wrong, because we found out that Toronto was soft, and they get swept, and then it was a seven-game series with Boston, and where, in my humble opinion, it was a battle of adjustments versus the greatest player in the conference, if not the league, and the greatest player in the conference, if not the league, and LeBron James led Cleveland to the finals. And in the Western Conference, I figured it would be Golden State and Houston. It was interesting to see how that went down. I um, do want to say one thing, though. When you shoot seven for 44 and threes in game seven, and the lane is pretty much open for mid-range shots and layups, you deserve to lose that game. Chris Paul being injured or not, you still have a serviceable guard in P.J. Tucker, and you have a above serviceable guard in Eric Gordon that can create his own shot. Why was everybody shooting threes for the entirety of the fourth quarter? It was comical how in... um how inept they were at shooting threes. And I was on Facebook when it happened and I was mentioning I was mentioning like to some people that cuz everybody was like, "Man, this is stupid. The Houston lost that game. This is the way they shot was ridiculous." And I said, "That's analytics for you because analytics says you you take the shot that that is worth more. So you take threes and we have Houston was built on analytics. Golden State was sort of built on analytics and their offense is three point intensive, even though they have three of the best shooters in the league and two Hall of Famers in Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. Everybody can't be the Warriors. And Rod Strickland said um, in one of the post game shows that if Houston makes six of those three pointers in the two pointers and he hits six of them, then Houston wins that game. Um, there's a couple narratives that that um, I was seeing on Twitter that I wasn't really feeling. The Kevin Durant situation, people people criticizing Kevin Durant. Um, game. Four, Five and game, I think it was game five and game six, or game four and game five. I'm not exactly sure. But there were moments in that series where Steve Kerr was not giving him the ball in half-court sets and letting him be, you know, Kevin Durant. Because early in, in, the, in that series, Early in that series, it was Kevin Durant would have 38 points, but it was quite it would it would be it would either be in a loss or it would be kind of quietly. And in the last few games, well, game seven he was inconsistent, even though he got 34. But the last couple games before that, I think it was six and five. Um, he wasn't being used correctly. Like you can be critical of him and say that he wasn't shooting well and say that he wasn't um, performing. But Steve Kerr didn't put him in situations where he would be an optimal scorer. 
You know what I'm saying? So you can't just go and put him and say he's he wasn't playing well, or you can't like have this narrative that he's a bad player because people now want to say he's better than LeBron James because he can score better. Because I think the Western Conference Finals, a lot of people on Twitter and a lot of, a lot of people on Twitter, a lot of the NBA people on Twitter were basically you know downplaying Kevin Durant and not looking at the situations that Steve Kerr put him in. Because there were situations in Game 5 and Game 6 where I was like, why does Kevin Durant not have the ball? Like, why why are we not drawing up plays where he's handling the ball like he did in the conference finals last year? And it was one on, it was him versus whoever's guarding him, and he shoots over everybody. Because in the conference finals in the first couple games, that's what he was doing, and nobody said anything. But when he's inconsistent or he's not shooting well, then everybody wants to run around and be like, Kevin Durant is, isn't a closer and all this stuff. All because nationally, people like Nick Wright and Colin and on Fox Sports 1, they're like, Kevin Durant is better than LeBron or will be better than LeBron if he wins this championship or he wins a couple more rings. And it's like, don't reverse the narrative just because the national media is dumb. Um, so that's on that. And as far as the Eastern Conference, the three-point thing is still an issue there because the last couple minutes of that game, Boston kind of got three happy, three-point happy, and they didn't, they couldn't hit threes, and they didn't have a closer. Jason Tatum has that ability, but he's not there yet. So to me, it was. Young guys not really knowing how to close. This is where I agree with people that Kyrie Irving being there would have been, I, w- being there would be important, and Kyrie Irving um, being there would change the outcome because athletically, and it's not that um, they don't have athletes on the on the Cavaliers. It's that. So Ron Lou has a rotation that he runs, and he runs about eight guys, and he runs about guys that he that he knows. And f- for the beginning of the series in the playoffs, he has his rotation, and he didn't really want to use the young guys. And when he started using Larry Nance, and when he started using, um, I'm not gonna put George Hill in there. Even though George Hill is new, George Hill is a veteran. But George Hill, there needed to be some a game where George Hill was good. There needed to be a game where Jeff Green was good. Matter of fact, Game 7 was that game. Um, your normal starting lineup, it doesn't do well with athleticism. Larry Nance played for what he can do. And I'm not saying he's the best player in the world because he isn't. But for what he can do was um, it ended up helping you in some games because there were games where Al Horford played very well and there were games there were games that Al Horford played very well and there were games that Tristan Thompson played okay but Al Horford got the better of him. You need to put some athleticism on the court and with... What's going to end up happening in the finals is they don't really run. Golden State's athletic, but that's not the point of their offense. So what's going to happen is he's going to put Toronto's going to put all the. I I can, I can bet it. Toronto's going to put all the three point shooters on with LeBron, and it's going to be drive and kick out and. Whoever hits the open three is going to hit the open three. And you got to hope that J.R. Smith and Kevin Love is um, healthy and Kyle Korver is healthy. You got to hope all them dudes can outshoot the Warriors. I don't think that's going to happen in four games. I, I just don't. And athletically, Teron Lue, to me, 
in this playoffs has shown that he's not, he doesn't trust the athletes that they do have. And I think that what's going to end up happening is just like last year with KD there, if Kerr does what he did last year, they're going to win that series because you're going to give the ball to KD in half-court sets and he's going to average 30. And that's just what it's going to be. So that's much, that's what I think is going to be in the finals. I think that Golden State is going to win in six games because there's going to be some situations where Cleveland is going to shoot you in the game, especially in home, during home. But um, I just I don't think that with if everybody plays correctly and if everybody's healthy, then they and if Steve Kerr puts Kevin Durant in a situation to where I know there's a lot of ifs here, but last year he did so they won. But I think there's too many weapons on Golden State. For Cleveland to win, I th- I think there's a chance because you never know what happens in the series. Draymond Green could get suspended. Somebody can get hurt. You never know. But as it is stands right now, it's Golden State in six. And a couple things I want to mention before I close, just in um the little things that I've been seeing in the last couple of days, the fact that. Golden State and Cleveland, this is their fourth finals. Um, the fact that people are like, this is boring. We don't, I don't want to watch this and all this other stuff. Here's the thing, man. I, I'm 36, and I'm conscious of the, of the, I'm conscious of the, the Lakers and the, um, the, the Celtics and that rivalry, but, I wasn't really in the basketball when that was at its peak, when I, when Bird and Magic was going at it like that, because that was in the 80s and I was like a little kid. What we're seeing now is, and it's probably going to end after this season because LeBron's going to leave, although I don't think he should. I think he's going to. What we're seeing now is two things. We're seeing the beginning of a dynasty if it isn't already here. If Golden State wins three uh, titles out of four years, that's dynasty now. We can we can say that it, it's officially a dynasty now. Uh, there's no uh, three peats or anything, but that's a dynasty in like sustained excellence. That's like Spurs type of stuff. One, em- enjoy that. Because there's no guarantee that the, that team is going to be together for a long time. Secondly, the fact that LeBron James is about to go to his ninth finals, eight in a row, that's a thing. That's that's a big deal. That's historic. Um, he still, to me, he has to win. To me, he has to win two more championships before we can put him in the category of Jordan. But... That tells me that he's because I because I still think he needs to he, he isn't better than Magic yet but you know I digress but he's better than Bird um, and what you're seeing right now and it's gonna end if he leaves is you're seeing the Lakers and the Celtics again like for those of you that that are in your twenties and don't really under and didn't and missed out on that that's what it is. Cause I've watched the, I watched the Lakers and the Celtics um, series I, on tape, and that's basically what we're seeing. The fact that you have a dominant team in the East, the fact that you have a dominant team in the West, and a dominant team in the West has All Stars on it, and the dominant team in the East has, um, although they don't have All Stars on it now. You know, you have a dominant player and they're battling and it's they're battling and it's good. Enjoy that, even though it's boring and people are like, I don't want to see it. This is going to suck. We know who's going to win. This this is still a compelling series. And from a historic aspect, 
the very fact that we're watching this four years in a row, uh, I honestly think it's cool. I don't think it's bad at all. I think if LeBron ends up winning, it would be amazing. And I think if Golden State ends up winning, it would be amazing. Because if Golden State ends up winning in this finals, then we have Steph Curry um, with three. We have Draymond Green with three. We have um, Klay Thompson with three. So then it be and KD with two. Then it becomes we start talking about legacies here, and we're start to, we're starting to talk about like where people rank on the greatest ever list. Because if we if we look at it at, with rings and impact. Where do we put Steph Curry as far as the the greatest ever? Because in a couple of years, if he keeps winning championships like this, injury or or not, and flaws in his game or not, three championships is three championships. We're quiet. We're, we're worried about what LeBron is doing right now because everybody just wants to put him as the gold status. And this is not like a as a Bulls fan and as a person that grew up watching. Michael Jordan, I'm not a LeBron hater. I'm a LeBron defender. But we're focusing on what LeBron is doing right now because everybody wants to put him in the Jordan category or the greatest ever category. And don't think we're paying attention to what's happening in Oakland right now. So, anyway, that's it. Um, Like I said, Golden State in six. Um, I'm going to... to try, because I feel real good. Now, I'm going to do, or at least try to do, a um, vlog after every game, like I did last year. If I can get a guest on it, cool. If it's by myself, then it'll be by myself. So, uh, anyway, push Wild Black out. Later.